One lucky day, Sebastian met Johnny and his father, Oscar, who had once performed with the Carlos Company. Oscar had kept a photograph of Sebastian's mother, Isabel, and he now gave it to Sebastian. Sebastian bubbled over with thanks as he stared at the face he'd seen in his dreams. And Oscar told of an old man near Granada who would know where to find Isabel. So Sebastian set off once again on his quest. His trusty companions, Belle and Pucci, were always ready to help him over the rough spots. As he emerged from the forest, Sebastian saw a pretty little lakeside village, and he decided to stop a while. Anything important going on out there, Raymond? It's Jolly. I'm certain that dog's Jolly. I demand you come to me. I think you're mistaking this dog for someone else. This dog's name is Belle, not Jolly. I'm sorry, but this dog belongs to me. Then I say you're a liar. <gasps> well, I'm the dog's legitimate owner. I owned this dog originally for many years. It was in the process of trading her. But that's impossible. This dog really belongs to me. Then you can answer these questions. Why don't you tell me where the dog was born? Well, she was born in... I don't really know. Do you know how old she is? Do you know what her parents' names are? Does she have any brothers or sisters? She has a deep scar on her right paw. Take a look. She got it while fighting a bear in a circus. You're lying. Bell only belongs to me. Jolly. I insist that that dog's name is Jolly, and Jolly belongs to me. <clears throat> Jolly. <gasps> Hold on a minute, Raymond. It's not very nice of you to stand on the street and fight about this. I'm sure you could discuss it more amicably if you were sitting down in the car. Discuss it more amicably? Listen, mister, you're mistaken. Bell is mine and I can prove it. I suggest we sit and talk about this in the car. Why, people are stopping and staring at us. Look, there are some policemen coming up the block. <gasps> But what do you think we should do, Bill? Well, why don't you simply step into the car? I can't! You, Jolly, get in the car! <gasps> what are you doing? Pleased to meet you. My name's Boris, and I'm a private businessman. So tell me, what's your name? My name's Sebastian, and this dog is Belle. 
The dog's name is Jolly. I raised her from when she was just a puppy, and I was training her to perform with me in the circus. Come on, Jolly, stay on that ball, will you? You see, I had trained her with a whip, and she understood my commands. Jolly did many fantastic tricks, and we became the stars of the circus. Then one day, the circus we were with traveled through the Pyrenees Mountains. tragic story. Now, don't you sit there and worry. I promise to listen to your story, too, just as soon as we get to our destination. But Sebastian is worried. Shortly, the limousine draws up before a splendid white house at the end of a winding lane. It's you, Mr. Boris. Good afternoon, lovely Lucetta. It does my heart good to see your face again. Uh, oh, that big dog! Oh, no, there are two dogs. What am I going to do? I really hate dogs. I just hate them. Whoever decided to bring them. Lucetta, what are you shouting about? Oh, good afternoon, Miss Julia. It's so nice to see you again, and you're looking as pretty as usual. I... It's really no use your driving all this way to come visit me. I have absolutely no plans to sell this house. Of course, I understand your sentiments. This house must carry many fond memories of your parents with it. Oh, excuse me for not introducing you. This is Raymond, a very close friend of mine. I know the only reason you're here is on behalf of the person who wants to buy this house from me. Very clever of you to figure that out, Julia. That's exactly why he's here. Well, it's no use even trying, I'm afraid. I have positively no intention of selling this house for any price for as long as I live. It's a magnificent house, and I see that a beautiful lady owns it. I would be entirely grateful if I could only take a short tour of it. And what are you doing here? How do you do? My name's Sebastian, and the big dog is Belle. And this little dog in my hand is Poochie. <laughs> I must insist the large dog belonged to me originally and is my property. No, she's not. Belle really belongs to me. Who's telling the truth about this? To be honest with you, a terrible misunderstanding took place just a little while ago between Raymond and Sebastian about the true ownership of this incredible dog. This being the case, I came here today to ask you a very special favor. We'd be very grateful if you would allow the boy and the dog to stay with you in your home for a few days until the problem can be resolved. Sebastian, are you out all on your own? Well, actually, I'm on my way to try and find my mother in Granada. Trying to find her mother? Mm-hmm. She's a member of the Carlos Company. The Carlos Company? Probably a traveling troupe of theater and circus performers. Is that so? Shouldn't you be in more of a hurry to catch up with your mother and the rest of the company? Mm-hmm. I should, but the man says that Belle belongs... <laughs> They can stay here for a few days. Please get them settled, Isetta. But, Miss Julia... It will only be for a short time. What? But I'll have to put you up in the stable boys' quarters because I can't possibly let you step foot in the house with those two filthy dogs. No, the boy can't be allowed to stay together with the Pyrenees dog. What? I can't let Bill be separated from me ever! Huh? You have to be fair about this until we come to a final solution to the problem. <gasps> I have a solution. How about putting the dog in a cage along with the rest of the dogs in the kennel? Well, that's all right with me. <gasps> Put him in a cage? You don't have to lock the cage, you know. Belle won't go anywhere on her own. The first thing you must learn is that it's important to train every dog properly so that it can obey its master's orders. And a good dog feels more comfortable having a strong master to obey. I'm sorry about this, Belle. I had no idea anything like this could happen when we decided to go to that town, but I promise you I'll get you out of here. 
I think I deserve an explanation, Boris. Julia just told us that she'll never sell this house under any circumstances. And my boss wants to buy this house desperately and says he'll pay anything to get it, no matter what. Don't worry, I have a solution to this problem. This house is going to belong to your boss anyway, after I'm finished with it. Besides, if I don't get this house, I'm going to be in a deep fix. I have lots of debts to pay off, and I plan to do so after the sale. But I don't believe she'll ever change her mind. Raymond. It looks to me like you were pretty good at training animals once, but that you're pretty inept at solving little problems here. <laughs> Don't take any offense. Do you have any idea why I brought that silly little boy and his dog along with us on this business? I insist that dog belongs to me. Listen to me. It doesn't matter who that dog belongs to. Ah. Have you read in the newspaper recently about a dog called the White Monster of the Pyrenees? They say there's a white monster? The reports say that the dog is very dangerous and that it killed many people. It also claims that the dog crossed the French border in the company of a young boy. Are you saying that Jolly is the white monster? I don't really know whether this dog is the white monster, but then neither do I care. Because with a little bit of effort, this dog can easily become the white monster. And if you're as good an animal trainer as you claim you are, you can teach this dog to do anything you tell it to do. Am I wrong? This dog is an incredibly rare and intelligent animal. And I can train her to do absolutely anything I want. Then the white monster will be terrorizing this area soon. And its unfortunate victim will be the owner of this house. A dog is a faithful servant of man. He follows man's orders and lives for man and dies for man. Didn't I hear you say that to me once? Besides, wouldn't you get into an awful lot of trouble if your boss couldn't actually purchase this house? You're an evil man, Boris, and this is an evil thing you're doing. <laughs> that night, the country air became quiet and still, but Belle could get no rest. Now, Belle, you just see. Huh? <laughs> Something wrong, Belle? Do you think there's somebody coming? Just be patient for tonight, Belle. I promise I'll get you out of here first thing in the morning. Good night. that fell accidentally from the upper terrace. It would have been terrible if Miss Julia had walked out here and been hit on the head. <laughs> Excuse me, Boris, but I found this dog roaming all by herself on the upper terrace. <gasps> Raymond, I thought you had made sure to lock the dog up securely in the cage in the backyard last night. I found the door had been broken. That's the reason the dog got away. The door had been broken? Yes, and there was clear evidence that somebody had been trying to tamper with the lock. 
I knew there'd be trouble, and that's why I warned you not to let a dog get put into here. I'm very sorry about this. Perhaps it would be best if we let Raymond train this dog in order to prevent her from repeating this behavior. <laughs> I'm sure Sebastian would agree with me on this, wouldn't he? But Bill would never do anything like you said. Are you saying I'm a liar and that I made the entire thing up? He isn't right, is he, Bill? You wouldn't do anything like that. <laughs> Say it isn't true, Belle. Please say that it isn't true. Sebastian flees into the woods. He and Pucci gaze bewildered over the water. Their familiar world has just fallen apart. Sebastian? I'm glad I found you here. Please remember to be careful. This lake is so deep that even a tall man can't stand in it without the water coming up over his head. Please try to forgive me, Sebastian. Lucetta would have gone to the police immediately if I hadn't talked to her like that and come up with an easy solution to the problem. Huh? You see, I've read all the reports in the newspaper about the white monster. <gasps> but you shouldn't worry about it at all. I haven't mentioned it to anyone. So it's a secret between two friends. Ah. <sighs> hmm. I recommend that for the time being, you leave Bell and Raymond's hands while you're staying here. Otherwise, there's no telling what will upset Lucetta and what she'll end up saying to everyone. Sebastian, I'm going to write a letter to the man who I believe first owned your dog, and I'm going to tell him the story of you and Belle and the difficult situations going on here between you, and I believe the owner will sympathize with your story, and Raymond won't have any claim on your dog. I appreciate your help, Mr. Boris. If you get too close to Belle, Raymond will become very upset. He'll report you to the police, Sebastian. Now, how about staying away from Belle for a while? I know it's not easy, but it's really the wisest thing. <gasps> it's really for Belle's good. Eh? Yes, Sebastian. You're only doing this for Belle's safety. Okay, I'll do it, but only for Belle's safety. Mm. Sebastian feels trapped and miserable about not seeing Belle, but he believes what Mr. Boris says and keeps away. Deep in the nearby forest, Belle is trapped in a different way. Your name is Jolly. Listen to me, your name is Jolly. You'll listen to everything I tell you, like when we were in the circus. Remember, I am your master and no one else. Listen to what I say. Did you forget this sound? So you will listen to me. Remember, I'm in control of your life and happiness. Bite this cuff on my arm. Go ahead, bite. Come on now, bite it now. You bite my arm. Bite it, I say. to obey every single order I give you from here on in. I know we both want to see Belle really badly, but I made a promise to Mr. Boris and it's only for the best. Okay. Let's take a quick look. We have to try to be very quiet. Hello, Bill.
Tinkerbell? Hey, come on over and visit us a while. What's wrong with you, Belle? It's me and nobody else is here. Hey, Belle, don't you understand what I'm saying to you? Belle, please answer me. We're still best friends, aren't we, girl? It's no good. Their friendship is too strong and the dog is still attached to him. Mm. It'll take time to train her if we leave the situation as it is. Okay, I'll call the police in the morning and report seeing the white monster. You're calling the police? If I plan this correctly, we won't have to worry about a thing. When the dog and the boy are both being chased by the police, it'll be easier to separate them. <laughs> Fast asleep, Sebastian dreams of happier times. Bell! Bell! <laughs> oh, Bell, I'll never let you go. We'll be best friends forever and ever. Father, Belle has changed and I don't know what to do. Poochie, this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> 